the Mighty Herald. Oh, purveyor of fine coffee table books about fucking early thrash metal in San Francisco. Jesus Christ, this book is amazing. Some of the photographs in there are stunning. And, it, and the man was kind enough to sign a copy to Danny, who, of course, was there from the very beginning. Of course. Yeah, yeah um, book came out awesome. Thanks for everybody's support, man. Yeah. No, I couldn't be happier. I mean, They're going to be my 12th year in DRI, and I still haven't been on an album. I know. Hint. Well, I was just heckling those guys about that to, for new material. <laughs> What was the story behind you guys coming to the Bay Area? Because uh, it seems an unusual progression from Houston. Well, Texas. once we were in a band and we were still going to see all these bands and just playing with them instead of, you know, they were coming through and then most of them were from California. Um, and we were like, well, we want to tour. We want to, you know, stop playing these same two venues and opening up for these <laughs> bands that are coming through Houston, you know? Yeah. And, and uh, we were in touch with uh, MDC and Verbal Abuse and, nice. And uh, they were like, hey, well, we moved out to uh, California and you can go out there and you can live for free and you can practice for free and you can eat at soup kitchens and we'll get you, we'll set you up with food stamps and, and before nice. you know it, you can be playing shows and going on tour and we said, fuck yeah, we did it. And went out there and within a couple months, sure enough, we were on tour. We were out touring the United States with, <laughs> with MDC and the Dead Kennedys on the Rocky Grant Reagan tour and never stopped. For a while there, Kurt was living in Golden Gate Park. <laughs> yeah, in a tree. He was living in a tree in Golden Gate Park. I was living under a broken down Somewhere park. I still have that book. Outside a soup kitchen. I used to sleep under a broken car and and we, we paid That's our punk dues rock. And, and now we actually have a bed, but it's it's behind it, uh, a broken down car in an alley, but now you've had some some trouble recently. How you feeling? I'm we'll feeling good. Obviously, I'm here. I'm doing shows again. Um, everything is working out. Um, we, we're, we always worry about you. I'm okay. Don't worry about me. That's good. <laughs> I'm a tough guy. Punk, punk rock will keep him in the game forever. It's a man. lot to take me out. That's right. Apparently so. Apparently so. And that's a, that's a good thing. I'm still kicking and biting and scratching. Norris gonna come up and do a, a song or two. Oh, good. That'll be fun. And we got a special guest, Mr. John Menard's gonna play the bass. Get up for John Menard, man. Bass player number six. Oh, fuck, shit! You say I'm scum? Very good, yes. Song, I mean, Frontman for DRI! Do you stop and think for a second, like, damn, I've been doing no, this for 30 goddamn years? Every now and then, somebody that, like you asks me about it. Yeah, I mean, does it, like, overwhelm you for a second? It's like, man, this, I've been doing this for a long goddamn time. And people still dig it. Yeah, no, it does surprise me. It really surprises me. Could you have imagined, you know, way back in Houston, Texas, that here we'd be 30 fucking years later? And you're Never. I was just thinking about that the other day where uh, I was on stage in Thailand. Right, right, right. And it was like, I, was I was thinking like, like it, when we first started, there's no way in a million years that I would have thought that in 30 years I'd be standing on stage in Thailand. You know, it's like. It's surreal, huh? It's, yeah, there's no way you could, you, no way you can even imagine that sort of thing. <laughs>
what do you think? Are we going to see some uh, new material from you guys? Or what? <laughs> I'm going to hassle well, you guys about this. As busy as we are, that it be, yeah, yeah we're, we're, we do talk about it, and we've been re recording some stuff. Our drummer has a like, little recording studio he brings with him now, so we got like in the Motel 6, you know, we're over there and recording uh, when we have a day off or something, which is rare. Uh, recording some stuff. We got some cool songs like um, As Seen on TV, yeah, Ag Against Me is another one. They don't all rhyme with each other, but the titles, I mean. Uh, right. But no, we got, we got some cool stuff. Um, Bad News is another song. It's looking more like kind of going back to the old school DRI stuff, not mm -hmm. not doing like what, which I like anyway. The uh, what, how we kind of expanded into the more like longer songs and stuff. This is more like short, hardcore, social, political type lyrics. It's good. DRI, I don't know, it's weird, it's like, it's sort of a, like, you know how... It's the biggest underground band I know. We're an acquired, I would say we're an acquired taste, like, kind of like oysters or um, caviar or puffer fish or something like that, you know, like, it's kind of dangerous to eat it because it's raw or something, but you try it anyway. And then if you like it, you know, maybe you'll start eating it more often. I think... Definitely, once you like it, you're definitely in. So yeah, I would compare ourselves to raw seafood and stuff like but, that. You know, I mean, it, all kidding aside, like you guys are the biggest underground band I know. I'm kidding. Yeah. No, I'm. I, okay. You can go to our website, dri1.com or dirtyrottenimbeciles.com. It's uh, not as much stuff as it used to be, mostly tour dates nowadays. <clears throat> we're on Facebook, and that's what really gets updated with news and stuff like that, you know, where we're playing, what we're doing. Um, the whole website thing is just basically tour dates and promotional stuff. So if you want, hook us up with Facebook. That's your best bet to keep updated. That, that, that was it. D DRI br brought it here at the Avalon in Santa Clara, and uh, all, all, the, all the bands were great. So for uh, Britt from Tennessee, she's leaving tomorrow. Yeah, and um, fucking reality check rules, keeping the underground alive, and I've had such a blast. And my Tennessee. head, my neck is going to be killing me tomorrow, and I've never felt better. The best feeling in the world. No, okay, so we're bidding Br Brett goodbye, and uh, thanks for DRI for coming on out, and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>